You're listening to Just Three Clicks, and this is episode 13, Bossing Like a Boss, <laughs> is, is what it's called. I'm Joey. I'm sat with my business partner, David. Uh, let's turn our phones off. Let me just turn my phone off. These are always, they used to be quite unscripted. We've got we've got a bit more structure now. If you guys have been listening over the last couple of weeks, we've, we do have a bit more restructure now, So, but we're still human. We still have interruptions, so I'm here with David today. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Just um, pretty tired today. I woke up at it's a US election, um, and for some reason, <clears throat> I always seem to wake up. Like, I I wake up during the night, you know, maybe two a.m., three a.m. Um, this week was four a.m. I woke up, and because it's the election, I was like, "Oh, what's going on?" Um, yeah. So I made the mistake of googling it at four a.m. and then. I didn't go back to sleep because I was just kind of watching it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty tired today, but you know, thought we'd do a podcast. It's on leadership too, so <laughs> fitting time. That's probably yeah. when Indy has planned it that way, I think, maybe subconsciously. Potentially. Talking about leadership today. So we are actually, before we get into it, actually, this is probably, well, I don't know if it's going to be the last day we do it like this, but we're going into a national lockdown again tomorrow. Um, so we got a lot more restrictions on, well, it's, it's essentially going back to how it was back in March, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of. Um, I think it's going back to how it was, but I think our mindset is different. Um, yeah. yeah. The entire country feels a bit more rebellious, if I'm honest. Like people seem mm. like they don't want to do it. So I think it's going to be different than last time. I think, although, yeah, it's the same kind of rules, I think. It's going to feel a bit different. Yeah. You know, I think the first time round when people were like not going to work, when they probably they probably could have gotten away with going to work because they could do that. Their, their job might be an office job and they didn't. But I think this time people would probably like to go to work. Yeah. Just because of how monotonous it does get at home. Um, so, you know, hopefully we're still we're still going to be doing this and we'll, we'll probably find our way around it. Um, I mean, there's only two people in this room. So as long as we've got some sort of. I don't know, maybe we'll build some sort of contraption. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> we could do, use a door. We could do one person outside the door. Yeah, something like that. We'll figure it out. So, all right, cool. So today we're talking about leadership. Uh, we're going to be talking about our experience um, as employees. So when we first started out back in the day, um, as well as kind of how we've transitioned into what, we, what we're doing today, thoughts on being a good leader and how we basically define leadership styles so uh, interesting thing that Nindy has done today is just before we got into the room today he said there's a bit of a surprise on the on the brief and and, and I think I can see it now and it's basically there's a quiz um, here and it says let's start with a quiz what kind of a leader are you okay so this is interesting so he's got me a little link here to a <laughs> to a very interesting little kind of survey. It says, and it's got like these items, like what's, what, what is your uniform? Where are you leading your team? And pick a second in command and all of this stuff. So let's, let's, let's try this, this is quite funny. So I'll ask you the questions. So, right, what's your uniform? Would you wear a plain white t-shirt, scrubs, a service uniform, a full bodysuit, a tuxedo or plaid? A plain white T-shirt. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd probably go plain white as well. I think Jamie would probably choose that one too. I think he would choose a plain black If t-shirt. there was a plain black, <laughs> that would be what he'd choose, but plain white is what we've got. So where are you leading the team? Down the stable road, down the moral road, down the long road, down the positive road, down the learned road, or down the right road? That's, that's pretty. A, t- that's hard. That's a good question. Stable road, a moral road, a long road, a positive road, a learned road, or the right road? I think the right road for me. The right road. Yeah, because I think I would always want to think what we were doing was right. And then you'd kind of, you'd discover maybe it was wrong. And then you would go down the learned road after that. So Ah, I think for me. Okay, so I'm going to open up two here because I'm going to do one in one tab and I'll do yours in another. So. I chose white the white t-shirt. You're choosing the right road. Yeah. I actually would have chosen the learned road. Yeah. But 
kind of agree with what you're saying there as well. So the next question is pick a second in command. Okay, there's six different types of dogs here. It looks like I'm going to have to show them to you. <laughs> so I don't know the I don't know the breed names. Uh, that's like an Alsatian, a spaniel, a bulldog, a sheep dog, and then I don't know the other two. My wife is a dog groomer. Um, she, she's gonna kill me for not for not knowing this, but I think for me, it would be. I've got two cocker spaniels, so I should choose them, but they're so annoying. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll probably say the Alsatian for me. The Alsatian. <clears throat> Top left, yeah. Top left, isn't it? Sorry, dogs. What's the bottom one in the middle? What was that? Down the land road. Okay. So that one is, this one's your one down the right road, and you're picking the Alsatian. I'm going to choose this one in the bottom middle. It looks like a. It looks like it's thinking. And it looks relaxed and calm, so I'll, I'll go with that one. Do we? Um, what's the URL? Just in case people listening want to do. Yeah. This so thing. what we'll do is we'll drop the URL under the podcast episode. It's on BuzzFeed, um, <clears throat> four slash Marines, four slash What kind of leader are you? Uh, but we'll drop it in the in the in the show notes so you can see that. <clears throat> so next one is, what is your biggest weakness? So you are loyal to a fault. You can be overwhelming. You can be unempathetic. Rash decision making, not taking time for yourself. You're too concerned with correctness. Oh, that's, that's a great question. Probably a few, a few of those will be on my. Yeah, me too. So, like time for myself. Yeah, I, I have to force myself to do that. So therapy every week, um, and it's been a mixture of things like going to yoga, um, massages, and kind of relaxation. So I, I do try and make that happen. Um, I think it can be a fault, but probably not now. Um, what else was there? Loyal to a fault. Um, you can be overwhelming. You can be unempathetic, rash decision making, concerned with correctness. That's hard. I know. It's quite difficult, that one. Probably. I mean, I think I've been all of those at some point in my career. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go is, with this is probably like hard to listen to right now because we're, we're thinking too yeah. much but I'm I'm going to go with I can be overwhelmed I know I can be overwhelming sometimes so I'll go with that one I think the first one for me loyal to a fault yep I'd say so okay next question how do you feed the team <laughs> profiterol fresh veggies Protein, handmade cookies, a hearty stew, or fondue. <laughs> uh, that's good. Handmade cookies. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're going to go handmade cookies. You're going to go protein, aren't you? I think I'll go protein. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to choose fondue for a second. It's a bit messy. You know, like, you know, <laughs> we'd have a full-time cleaner, so... Okay, how do you get in shape? Uh, triathlon, a mile run, yoga, team sports, a mud run, or spin class? Well, I would just bought a Peloton, so spin for me. Spin class. Okay. I think I'd have to go... I mean, I like lifting weights, so I don't really play team sports. I used to do yoga. I don't like running. I wouldn't do a mud run because I don't like getting dirty. So triathlon would probably be the only one left from elimination for me. Yeah, but you've got to run <clears throat> and bike and swim, and you can't swim. I can't swim. Can't, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, all right. Um, you have to do spin class with me. Yeah, I'll just okay. I'll have to go for the spin class. Uh, do you know what? I'll do team sports. I used to play. I used to play basketball, so maybe that's probably the closest one that can get to there. So choose a literary figure. Jane. Aya. Yeah? Yeah, Jane Eyre. Uh, Eyre. Okay, this this is not my my route, but Jane Eyre, Julia Capulet, King Arthur, Atticus Finch, Romeo Montague, and Sherlock Holmes. Well, I'm gonna go Sherlock Holmes just because I like I like investigation and that kind of thing. So I'll go there. I'd probably say. 
I could say similar because I'm I, I'm quite a bit of a detective. I think I'm quite good at finding <laughs> things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll probably go with the same. Sherlock Holmes, right? Next one. How do you sign off an email? Oh, with you, <laughs> with warm regards, sincerely, yours, best, very very best, or with your name. Normally with my name. Yeah, me too. I don't think I've n literally never written any of those other things. I might put like cheers. I might put or, cheers or yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, probably, but not quite informal, really. Like I'm not. Yeah. Um, and if I'm in like an email conversation, I don't sign it off at all. Yeah. So if I'm like just going back and forth, I'll stop. Yeah. Yeah. This one's interesting. Drop and give me some respect, your loyalty, one hundred. The exact amount that you're capable of, 20 or as many as you want. <laughs> I think for me, as many as you want. Yeah. Like I think for probably if I'm trying to manage somebody, then I'd rather them do what they were capable of and what they wanted to do. And if that's enough for me, I'm happy. Mm. Um, if it's not, then you know I'd add more structure, but yeah. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I think that's our management style as a company, actually, is like we don't force people to, we don't force people into a corner to produce something that they can't produce. I think, you know, we get, like, okay, the video team's under a lot of pressure right now because we've got so much to do. And and I guess, you know, that there is that pressure there, but I think that's just because of the nature of the launch and things like that. If we weren't doing the launch, it would be a lot more kind of, let's just produce really great stuff. It doesn't have to be loads, but you know, let's do what we can kind of thing. Yeah. I think I'd say the same, as many as you want. How will you be remembered? By the work I left behind, by my charm, by my flawless decisions, by the people closest to me, by my honor, or by, by few for a short time? Probably by the work I left behind. I would say. Yeah, I'm gonna say the same thing. Okay, so the type of leader you are, David, is a logical leader. You make calculated decisions based on learned experiences. People come to you to solve complex problems. You lead with your knowledge, which makes your choices that much more effective. That matches with my personality type. So How's I'm that? like an INTP, which oh, is like yeah. a, a logician. So yeah, that's. I've got the exact same thing. I've got the same as you. I think you're an INTJ. Yeah. Architect. I'm an INTP, so, yeah. Are you like the architect thing? INTPA. No, I, I'm a logician, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the architect one, whatever that is. But that's very interesting, by the way, if you've not ever done that. It's the 16 personalities test is really, really worthwhile doing. And if you've got people that work for you, it's pretty cool to get them get them to do it as well to get a vibe of kind of how they work and stuff yeah that was pretty interesting um you know like th there's so many different types of ways that you could lead and i think one thing we've always had is like we all we all are very different in a lot of ways but i think our general overall consensus is always the same just to like put this out there i hate the term leader yeah yeah like <clears throat> I, I don't like using it about myself because mm. i don't think it shouldn't be a descriptive word. It should be like a feeling. It should be like you want to, you want to follow somebody. You want to look up to them. You shouldn't have to like say it, or they shouldn't have to say it. It's kind of like say, someone saying, "Like I'm really like attractive." Yeah. Like <clears throat> other people can see it, and other people can, you know, interpret you that way. But you should never look in the mirror and just think it. I think leadership's very similar. If you look in the mir mirror and you call yourself a leader, you say, I am one. I don't think you are. Yeah. Like, that, that might sound counterintuitive, but it's just the way I think about it. Like, y you don't call yourself a leader. Other people do. Other people, you know, they, <clears throat> it's their decision, not yours, because you're not, you can't, <laughs> you can't follow yourself, basically. You can't follow your, your own person. You've got, that, that for me is a, that's why I just don't like, I see people calling themselves like marketing leaders or um, I'm just like, you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> There's a very strong, um, <clears throat> I think, an interlink between the ego 
element of our psychology and people that really want to be that leader. I think there's a difference between people that want to want to be a leader and that people that actually do it. Yeah. Um, because I never started a business to say I want to be a leader. Like I don't care about. <laughs> I don't really care about being a leader. Like, like it doesn't do anything for me. Um, I think we've all. I think we do lead. Like we lead from the front in terms of we lead strategic direction. We have the vision of where we want to take things. And, you know, for me personally, it's just like, I just have the hope that the people that are on our team can share that vision with us. And they're just as passionate about it as we are, basically. Yep. Um, I think it's hard as well when you're not from, I think as entrepreneurs, especially when you're kind of a, I can I, I think I'm a good starter. I'm very good at starting things um, and like kind of creating that initial kind of energy and, and things to move forward. And it's kind of hard to then take that and, you know, push it forward all the way and then start thinking about everybody else. Like I'm, that that for me is where I'm more uncomfortable. So it's something I've had to work on is like my awareness of other people and like how my decisions can impact like their view on me, on the business, on everybody else. And <clears throat> it's kind of, I think, for me, if I had to kind of define what leadership was, it would be an awareness of how your actions impact everybody else, really. Um, yeah. I think an understanding that everybody's different. Some people, you know, need an arm around the shoulder. Some people need a kick up the ass. You know, it's kind of, um, that for me is what uh, being a, a good leader is, I guess, if, you, if you're going to talk about it that way. Um, but I think that for me, that's just, I wouldn't class that as as me being a leader. I just think it is, it's just how to be a good person, how to how to be successful in business, how to, I mean, all these things, if you get move to the top of what you do and, you know, you run in a business that um, is competing in a market, then t- effectively you are, you are, <laughs> You're a leader within that business, and then yeah, because that's um, what I just I, I I just typed definition just because I just wanted to see yeah. what it was described as. I, I just for me it's a very it's a very like, uncomfortable subject just because yeah. because I don't like, think I'm you not, should just I don't think you can just say it says like a person who leads a com- or commands a group. Yeah, but that doesn't mean if I commanded a group, it doesn't mean I'm good. I mean, I mean, we we essentially command the group by default because we we own the shares in the company, so effectively and we pay everybody's wages so by default we are in that position but i wouldn't know i just wouldn't describe us as that like i'm i just i just don't like the term (laughs) and i know obviously i mean i don't think probably when we started talking about this i don't think this was probably the way the podcast was meant to go but i just think that for me to talk about it feels just uncomfortable like Mm -hmm. i'd rather someone i'd rather i'll our staff members and our, our kind of employees, they spoke about this from their perspective and whether they thought we were good or bad yeah. or in, they were indifferent to how we how we work. Because I think <clears throat> it's very hard for me to look at myself and say that I'm doing a good or bad job on that front. It's it's not really my choice. Yeah. I'll do what I think is right. And I think that's right. the difference is like you have your technical definition of what a leader is, which is someone who commands a group. But then you've got the more philosophical view of what a leader is, which is like, you know, what are the qualities of an actual good leader? And I think that they can all be different. Some people like are dictators and they, you know, yeah. people like Hitler. rule. Yeah, like <laughs> Hitler was a leader. People rule with fear, <laughs> don't they? Like, so they, they, people are scared to say no. Yeah. For me, that's not, it's not leadership. Yeah. Um, and the kind of, when we answer those questions, things like down the right path and do is drop and give me as many as you can. That is what I, like I want people to choose to be here. Yeah. If they don't want to be, if someone doesn't want to be here with us in this in this business. Yeah, you just don't want them. That's cool. Like I'd rather you just weren't here. And that's not me saying, you know, being nasty or being horrible with it. It's just move, go and find something that you're passionate about and somewhere that you feel like you're valued or you want to be like, for me, that's the worst kind of person to have in the business. Somebody who just yeah. comes in to pick up a paycheck. Like, yeah, you can go and get a paycheck elsewhere. Um, I want you to want to be here. I want you to buy into what we're doing. And I think 
the only way you can get that from people is to give them the freedom to go and explore, really. Yeah. What would you say is some good characteristics of a leader? Um, <clears throat> I think empathy is quite a big one. That's the first one on the list, yeah. High emotional intelligence, empathetic. Yeah. So I think that's important just... I mean, I think I, I'm... I think I'm quite an empathetic person. I think I pick up on people's emotions quite well. Um, and that, I can itself, can be very draining. <clears throat> it can be quite hard to deal with as well. Um, so, so I think that is quite quite a positive thing to have in, in a leader, but not too empathetic. I think you have to have a... a there has to be a cut-off point for that empathy, or yeah. else you get dragged into too many things and too many too many battles. So you've still got to be... I think you've got to show enough empathy, but then you've got to apply a logic to that and say enough is enough and now need to change how I'm operating. So I think I think emotional intelligence is good, but too much of it, I think it kind of stifles you as a someone who's trying to push things and drive things forward. Yeah. Um, I think... I mean, someone who can be quite introspective and retrospective you can learn from the past mm. learn from mistakes i think um like n not being too stubborn that you think you're always right i think so like probably what's <laughs> what's the opposite of being stubborn um being what is the word almost placid i suppose yeah I, th I, th I think for me like i I the lack I, of I the backbone. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, but see that's neg I think stubbornness can be negative. I think I mean accepting that you're wrong. I think Yeah. I, accepting that you can be wrong and being prepared not to apologize, but being prepared to, you know, to move forward without falling out with somebody. So like I can sit I could have a really I mean, we've did it in the past. I we've had really heated arguments, um yeah. or discussions where you know, we've probably, t if someone walked in, they would think we were falling out. But then the minute we stop the discussion and we decide what we're going to do, it's just back to normal. That for me is like a big part of, of being a leader. You should be able to, you should be able to take the criticism or take feedback on board without firing back at somebody. You should understand that, you know, you're not always right and that other people can be right too. Yeah. Um, I think it's important. It, I think it's very important to to not kind of get full of your own self-importance. Um, and I think not seeing conflict as a negative as well. Like conflict can be positive. Um, yeah. I can think I said to someone the other day, um, that it kind of creates new ground. Like that friction creates, like volcanoes happen from friction, don't they? And then creates new ground. And then that's kind of, it's not a negative thing. It's yeah. um, it's positive. So I think Davey, I mean, I, I've gone around the houses a bit there and probably not been very direct in what I've said, but I think they're kind of a few things that I think. What about like when we were employees, like trying to think back to if I ever had a good leader? I don't know. Um, um. I only worked for somebody till I was 21. And the answer for me would be no. Yeah. Because I wanted to quit my job. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think for me, probably no. Um, Same for me, really. I never stuck at any of my jobs. And I think if I had someone that was inspiring me or at least developing me, yeah. I would have wanted to have stayed. I think I felt under underappreciated um but the problem with me was i everything boiled down to money for me so if someone got paid more than me but i was doing more than them yeah it used to really piss me off yeah yeah um and i think like in my in my younger days i was so financially driven that to so for someone to lead me they would just need to say if you do this you're going to make more money and then i would have just done it yeah um 
whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But that's how I was as an <laughs> 18, 19 year old. Um, and then by 21, I'd quit my job. So I think it's interesting as well, because we're thinking about like when we worked somewhere, we're talking about managers, basically. And like there's a there's a point here about the difference between a leader and a manager. And there's, there are a lot of differences between those two things. Like we obviously, we, myself, David and Jamie have to drive the business forward. Like, and in my head, I'll class that as we're having to lead it. Like, and I don't mean like we're leading it as a, you know, we're commanding a group. It's more just like, you know, we're leading the direction of where things need to go. Which is like captaining a ship, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you know we'll decide where it needs to go and then we yeah. get the right people to help us to do that. Um, whereas a manager, that's a that's a nitty gritty type role where it's like you've got to look at people and manage people in a different way. And, you know, that's not what I... I try, like, I have moments where I, where I have to be a manager, I guess. Like, you know... And you got to manage people in a certain way at some points, but it's like I wouldn't say my day to day here is like managing people. It's probably the, the least thing that I actually do. I, th- I think for me, because of my personality type and being so like, logical, like I have to bring more emotion back into like the the empathetic side of myself. I have to bring that into my role more because I can have a tendency to be too logical sometimes and people just become like chess pieces that I'm moving around to achieve certain goals um yeah. and that's I think I think I can be that way I like can become people become like pieces to move around and achieve what, what we're trying to do so if we're going to plan out a product launch I can do it all in my head or if we're doing starting a new department like sales or partnerships I can be very you know if this person does this and this happens, then the outcome is this, and the outcome that we get there is going to drive X, Y, Z in the business. And then, like I can, I'm very logical, but then I don't sometimes factor in that these are people, and people can make mistakes. People can have a bad day, a good day, um, bad month, bad year. Yeah. People can go through anything, and that's going to impact the results we get. And I think that's one thing I've had to work on. Um, is to bring that kind of empathy into into the role and understand that if we don't hit a target, it's not the end of the world. Like you've got to manage that person and actually work with them. And if they're going through a bad time, help them. And you know the results come second because at the end of the day, we're all just people, and yeah. you can't. We're not we're not robots. And I think that's the one thing about probably being in in charge of a company. Like this is a, you can run from a spreadsheet like everyone's a robot. Yeah. That's what investors want to see. That's what, you know, the board wants to see. But if you boil down what that spreadsheet is, it's just a bunch of people trying to do the best, uh, you know, best for the family, the best for themselves, uh, maybe get out of debt, maybe buy a house. Like all these people, all these numbers on this spreadsheet, they've all got aspirations and they've all got, their own things they want to do. Um, so you can never, like, just run things with no emotion. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's, that's probably how I view things at the minute is, you know, you, as someone who's, like, hyper-logical, like, you can never, you can't just run a business based on that. No. You could you could play, like, a game based on that. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, we used to play... What was the game? The Software Inc. Yeah, yeah. So you can be... Mm, that's that's a very logical game. Um, but a business isn't the same. No. Like, you know, we had, we've had we had discussions many times. I mean, Jesus, we had one yesterday about where we were trying to compare a logical decision to a humane decision. And it's like, you know, there's always... It's it's weird. Like, there's, there's, a, mix, there's a mixture of things that come into like when you're when you're running a business and like you have to look at both sides sometimes i think it's what you get back as well from the other person so if if i'm making a logical decision but then i bring some like emotion into it if the emotion isn't coming back to me from the other person i'll move back to logic if that makes sense yeah yeah yeah. and i think this is where people say like ruthless people would class 
a logical decision has been a ruthless one. Yeah, that, sometimes, yeah. Like, so, yeah, sometimes. And I think that's where like, entrepreneurs can get like a bad a bad name. Yeah. Because um, they think that we make decisions without emotion. But the problem is sometimes like, I mean, as an example, let's say you're in a business where you're all kind of, let's say it's a startup, you're, you're cash flow positive, you're not, you not got much money in the bank, but it's going okay. And you've got three salespeople. So two salespeople are performing really well, but the guy who gets paid the most, like, is having a bad time. Maybe it's a bad time at home, maybe something bad's happened. And because he's not delivering on the numbers, you your cash position is is decreasing. And at what stage would you... Like let's say you've tried to manage this situation and turn it round, but it's not working, and this guy's going deeper and deeper. At what stage would you change that? Like, at what stage does his negative impact on the business start affecting other people? Like That, that for me, is when I, I become more logical. If, if that person was impacting other people... Yeah. Like that's when you've got to make a decision. I think that, that again, that's how I would kind of, I mean, this is quite granular, but I think you've got to f- find a difference between being logical and being human. And I think if you can be human and you can help people, great. But if that person starts to really negatively impact other people and, you know, the business could essentially not exist or, um, they could get someone else, you know, they could impact an entire department and so on, a, a budget. Yeah. I think that's when you've got to be more logical and you've got to take empathy. Well, not, you've got to not take it away, but you've got to kind of put it to one side. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's how I view things is like always be kind of like manage people as people until they start really affecting other people. Yeah. Um, and it, if they could affect the wider organization then be more logical yeah there's a question here on like well the first part of it is what do we do here like are we leaders managers both or other um i think we can for me personally i'll probably fall into i sometimes can be a manager yeah i could sometimes lead like i guess Sometimes I'm not either and I'm just doing something on my own because I've just got to get something done. <laughs> yeah. I think we all we, we, we all fall into all three. Um whether we're any good at it is a different Yeah. Um a different matter. Like Like I for instance, like I've had to like this week my I've taken a responsibility to create a process for our content team. So you know, it's like how we're getting our content out, how we approve things, and basically just looking at some, like, essentially the process there. Like, I don't even know if that's a management thing or if that's a leader thing. I don't really even know. Like, yeah. though, I don't ever think about it like that. <laughs> how many manage- management courses and leadership courses have you been on? <laughs> I've, I've, I, honestly, like, I can't tell you, like, anything about things from a textbook when it comes to that. I just know, right, that process isn't working right now. We'd fix it. So I just tried to fix it the best yeah. that I can. Um, I think I'm aware of, like, man, I can see I see people come into the business, right? Like we interviewed a guy who was, like, the kind of guy who would bring in donuts on a Friday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. bring in, like, the guy who would, you know, put his arm around someone and say, oh, you've done a really good job, like, you know, go and take half a day off. Like that for me is like that's a manager. That's, that's a what, manager. Like yeah. if I had to like view a manager, that is like that is what I think. Is it morale? Like, is it like making sure people's morale is where it should be? That's a management thing, isn't it? Yeah, but I think that should just come from your job. Like, yeah, that should come from. Because like, he said something about what did he say? Like he's gonna get every. He was gonna get them all to wear hard hats or something. Yeah, they, they had like um, a support issue or something, and he got everyone to wear hard hats and like. I was impressed with him as a as a as a candidate. Yeah. Um, we actually offered him the job, but he he turned it down in the end because he went somewhere else. Um, he might be listening to this one day. Yeah, well, it's fine, but it, it, it's nothing bad. Like it's, <laughs> I thought he was he was good. The hard hat thing was a bit much for me. He, yeah, but yeah, weird. but the thing is, that is, 
for us. For you know me, I mean? maybe, yeah. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't do that. But if someone did it in the business, I wouldn't be like, that's a bad idea. Because as long as people are happy and people respond to it, great. Um, but well, I, that's more like granular management of people. Um, I think, again, I just think that it comes back to like drop and give me as many as you want. Like if you give people that freedom and autonomy to do as they as they please mm. but you give them the guidelines to operate within surely i mean that's how i would want to be managed that's how i would want someone to to work with me this is the result we want yeah. now you go and I, I trust you to go and do that and get there on your own if you've got a problem come back to me you know what I mean? and, and that's kind of how i view it and I think if you do that, you don't need to bring in cookies on Friday. You don't need to. No. Um, you don't need to do that kind of thing. Because it's like you're trying to. It's like you. It's like when you have a dog, and you want him to come inside from the garden, and you do it by getting a little treat and putting it on the floor. I'm just explaining this because this is how I get my dogs to come in. So like, <laughs> what, I'll put a treat in the living room, and then they'll run in and get yeah. the treat. And it's like I'm rewarding them for for, for coming in, but they should just want to come in basically because yeah. they like being there i'm not trying to compare our staff to dogs by the way so don't be offended if anybody from here is listening that's not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is that you should come to work just because you love being there like that's we're trying to create an environment where i mean look at like if i look at the video guys like tom he's loving editing this documentary because it's like the biggest thing he's ever worked on it's really fulfilling for him you know he knows it's going to be seen by you know potentially hundreds of thousands of people so it's like a big deal for him like you know that's cool that's what a job should do like i don't need to give him a donut like. no this is it <laughs> and i think yeah i again i think we can get get lost in the big picture sometimes um you know we i think as someone who's got like an anxious mind um i operate in the future quite a bit so like i don't think i, I think most entrepreneurs would be the same um because what you do is you, you you build backwards so you say right i want to be I want to sell a company for a billion dollars. So how do I do that? Well, number one, you've got to sit in a billion dollar company like in your own mind. So what does a billion dollar company feel like? What does it like? What does a billion dollars feel like to me? How I, like, what would I do with a billion? What would my life be like? And then you work backwards from that. that this is me personally. And bringing all that stuff back to the present is quite quite difficult it's quite hard to manage and i think when it comes to like leadership if you bring too much back from the future you kind of miss what's going on around you and you can kind of i think a lot of people who say operate in the business they can't think that far ahead because it's not their job to yeah so i think i can get lost in the big picture quite quite often where i'm striving towards this massive goal in the future and everything else that's happening around me is a bit I'm not paying as much attention to it. But the problem is those people need the attention. They need kind of you to be in there with them to, to help them. Um, yeah. And if you're not, I think that's when you can kind of, things can, culture can suffer, um, you know, the quality of, of production starts to slip. And I think that's the biggest challenge. I mean, you may be the same. The biggest challenge I've got in a business like this is, it's trying to be in the moment a bit more and you know yeah. we're never going to get to be a billion dollar company unless we focus on hitting the numbers we need to in november in december yeah. and january like if we don't nail the next three months then we'll never be that company anyway so there's no point <clears throat> you know i think that's that's probably the reason why we've not really ever been like a hyper process driven business because we don't me you and jamie you all have an anxious mind so like we're never really actually looking at, we do, but I'm just saying over the vast majority of the time, our focus has always been like, how do we do the next thing? Yeah. And that's, that's probably what stopped us from building those processes, which we are doing now, like, and it's all coming into place now, but reflecting back on it, because what you said there kind of just like hit me there, because it was like, that's why we don't have processes, because we're not looking at what's happening right now. No. Like, we're just looking at what are we doing later? Like, how do we do the big thing? Um, yeah, he's always been chasing the next big thing, and then, but I think what we've learned maybe over the last two years has been, 
like when you're chasing that next big thing, you've got to get a lot of things done around that to to like support that when yeah. it happens. It's kind of like building skyscrapers. You know, you've got to build the foundations. You've got to, you know, you can't just go from having like a two-story house to like the Burj Khalifa. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what's funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Um, <laughs> uh, um, no, so yeah, you, I see what you're saying. You've got to like build things in between that. You know, you've got to go and build like a 20-story apartment block. You've got to figure out how to do that and then, you know, after that, the next biggest thing. And each time you do that, you learn new lessons and you're starting from a better platform. Yeah. Um, a good thing to kind of close on there is there's a question. The last question on here is like, what do you have to do to actually become a leader? Like, do you, where do you learn to become a leader? Do you go to leadership college? And it says like, <laughs> do you have to go and get an MBA and all of this? And it's, I just find that really funny. No. Um, I mean... Look at, um, I mean, let's go kind of like Netflix. There was a documentary about a guy who had a cult in the US. You watched it. Oh, yeah. Did he get an MBA? The yoga guy. Did he get an MBA? No, no, he was just I, <laughs> very persuasive. So um, that's kind persuasive. of like an example of like negative, being a, kind of leading people, but in a negative way. Yeah. So he had no MBA, but he was very, very good at what he, he did. got people to believe into his, believe his passion and believe in his vision and yeah, that, yeah. that's what so i think that. for me that is what a leader is it's somebody who can show passion and then educate other people on why like what the, their vision is and their passion is correct yeah and that they're following the right path so that people feel good going down it yeah so I, nobody wants to go down the wrong path so when we talk about the right path, I think for me, I don't know if the path I'm going down is right. I assume it is because that's why we're making the decision to move down it. It could be wrong. Like, I'll anticipate that. But I want everyone to know that is behind me that there's a good chance it's right. And if it is wrong, that I'm prepared to take a step back and forge a different path. Yeah but with the best intentions. I think for me, that is what leadership is all about. If I'm, if I'm going to talk about it, it's about having those people know like that the safe behind you and that you're moving in the right direction. And if you're not, then you're pretty good at changing course and making sure everyone's still safe. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like, like, look, like at the end of the day, no one comes into a business and, and looks at, a manager or, or the CEO or the founder and whatever and says, yeah, they're going to be a good person to work for because they've, they've got the qualifications for it. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it, that never happens. Um, and I can speak from experience, like some of the decisions we've had to make, some of the things we've had to go through, like whether we had a, a degree or not, literally would mean fuck all. Like it wouldn't change anything no. because of the, the emotional investment that we've had in the business that's what's taken us forward not well you know i've read a book and it said to do this like yeah like i mean if we talk about that time back in the block you know when we were releasing clipio that first time and it was quite a tough time there wasn't you know if somebody actually looked at that from a from an educational perspective they'd probably think it was like you know maybe that's a wrap like that's it like you can't do anything now but we basically just it was just sheer fucking willpower <laughs> and determination. It was like, well, this is what we've got to do, and that's it. Yeah. Like, no books taught us how to do that. It's just your mentality, really, yep. and your passion for it. I think another thing as well is, like, doing things. I Do as I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. So a lot of people who kind of manage people and lead people, they tell people what to do, but then they don't do the same things themselves. Yeah, yeah. That's like, um, I was writing something the other day about like congruency between words and actions. Because I think, I mean, to go off on a tangent, I think the a big problem in the world today is that people's words and people's actions aren't congruent. So you'll get people saying, um, we should be, I mean, we should be kind to everybody. But then they'll then say, like, 
someone. I, I, as an example, you had people say like Caroline Fleck is a, like a so, uh, someone who uh, in the UK was a TV presenter and she killed herself. Um, and what people said was, was like in a world where you can't be, where you can be anything, be kind because everyone's like you need to be kind to to people. Um, well, then the same group of people, when say Boris Johnson got COVID, said that like they hoped he would die. Yeah. yeah. So that there is like a very incongruent way of thinking because you know the saying two polar opposite things, but meaning both, and their actions then they don't represent. Like, yeah. And I think when it comes to leadership, it's the same kind of thing. So you should always try and make sure that whatever you tell someone else to do, you're prepared to do yourself. So don't, you know, don't expect someone else to go and do what you won't do. Like yeah. beat down the path first and then show them what to do or do it with them. It's for, just leading by example, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably another way I would view things. It's kind of don't be that dictator who just tells people what to do. Yeah. Um, go and do it yourself and show them that you're prepared to or that you, you can. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, that's probably us now. 46 minutes in, roughly 45 minutes. And that's pretty much our definition on leadership. We didn't really give one, really. It was just... It's, it's, ve it's very difficult for me. Like, I'm... I feel uncomfortable talking about it. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> it's... Um, because I just don't... I don't but it's kind of one of these things I just don't believe you can define it. I think it's a feeling no. that's I think it's a feeling that somebody gets and it's a it's a it's a mixture of many different things. I think like ultimately you don't go and fill the leadership role. It's like if someone's hiring for a a leader in a comp like a team leader. Yeah. Like okay, fine, you could be a team leader, but I don't think you just go and fit the role. Yeah. As I, an example, like when I worked at this events company the, the, the role that I went for was a team leader role, yeah. Now, when I joined the company, a lot of people there had a problem with me because the only thing they kept saying was, yeah, but you've only been here for a few days. Yeah. You've only been here for a week. You've only been here for a month. So how can you be a team leader? That's that's why you can't just go and be a leader. That's yeah. why it's not just something you wear on your head. Like, you have to... <laughs> put your leadership hat on. <laughs> yeah, put the, <laughs> the leader hat. Um you know, yeah, it, it, being a leader is, is about having kind of traits and, and I think. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that people listening to this will disagree and they'll say you can define what a good leader is and you can go on courses, you can get MBAs and that makes you a better, a better one. But uh, it comes down to like your own personal views and personal opinions. And for me, I, I just think it's something that, you know, you either are or you aren't. I think you can work on becoming one. Um, yeah. But... You know, it, it's going to be different for different people. Um, like I'm going to, I'm going to operate differently to you, and people are going to. Some people are going to resonate with how I work and what I do. Some people resonate with you. M maybe there'll be a crossover, but you know, you look at say footballers, soccer players. Like some respond well to one type of manager, some respond well to another type. Um, it, everybody's just different. So I think for me, yeah, it's just about trying to make as many correct decisions as you can yeah and don't piss anybody off in the process <laughs> like it. if if you get on with people and people admire you as a person and then you try and make good decisions that take you down the right path like i don't think you can go wrong really yeah cool well i hope you guys have enjoyed the episode that was leadership <laughs> by <laughs> by us david and joey so um that's it we'll see you in the next episode remember if you hit the subscribe button and you follow us on spotify and wherever else you get notifications when we release new episodes so go check those out and if you want to watch the video episodes go to youtube.com forward slash videos and you can check them out there so till next time we'll see you later and have a good day <laughs>